control. So if you, raise, if you raise your hands any higher than that, they're in the frame. Alright. So, I get your So, I am seeing right now from right about the hole in the table. The moon is lifting to the nightingale. I gotta be in position there. That's why we're in the world around us. Can you hear us? Tell me what you hear. We can see you, we can hear you, and uh, we're going to go live on the stream. Sweet. I've got you pulled up right now. All righty. All right. So, good morning from CARE out here in Apopka. With me today, uh, we've got Kristen, who is the director um, of CARE, and uh, we're going to be going over some of the animals that they have out here some of the uh, projects that they've done with uh, support money that they've gotten from Megaplex. And uh, we've got a special treat. We're also going to be maybe doing a live feeding. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that, but you will see if you stay tuned. I will turn it over to Kristen now to uh, introduce everybody, and we might even have a special guest joining us okay. during this uh, beginning part. How's everybody doing today? We love having you guys out. We're very excited about this. Um, as many of you might know, technology is my not my friend. So this is amazing to me that we can do this. Um, we want to show you a little bit around our place. And like you said, share with you some of the uh, projects that we've been able to do because of your funds and everything. And as we go around, we'll be introducing you to different animals and all. Our first one is like one of our mascots. Many of you may know him. It's famous Amos coming coming out right now. Come here, Amos. Famous Amos making his appearance. Oh, look what I got. <laughs> and he's a sucker for grapes. Amos. We're trying to keep him healthy today. And he's just wondering what all is going on here. There you go. Yeah, Amos has become our mascot around here. He does a lot of meet and greets. Um, we do let him run run loose quite a bit because he doesn't go anywhere. He was raised like a child. He's very bonded to us. So uh, he comes out and does his little meet and greets and gets his treats. And um, often we uh, actually let him pick which animals he wants to go in with in the daytime, which monkeys he wants to go in with. Uh, at night he comes in. Um, the reason for that is when we first rescued him, he was in bad shape. Um, he was actually leashed to his dead mom in bed. Um, a very tragic situation. Uh, animal control came in and, and had to use hazmat suits and a catch pole to get him out and everything. And, he had nightmares for quite a while, for almost a year off and on at night. So, um, Amos, come here. Come here. <laughs> As you can see, we're not real formal around here. Let me see if I can get him to turn around again and show you something else he can do. Can I see him? Yeah, so Amos um, comes in every night because of his nightmares and everything. So, uh, and then goes out in the daytime with other animals. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's saying hi to Aunt Kelly. You can do it, buddy. What? Is it too tight? There you go. Now, he doesn't have thumbs on his fingers. He has thumbs on his feet, but he can usually master this pretty easily. Need help? Here. He can just loosen it. There you go. It's early. Amos is, is just waking up. <laughs> Amos actually was watching Toy, Toy Story 4 just a few minutes ago, so he's He's a Pixar and Disney fan. So, so yeah, this is uh, Mr. Famous Amos, and he'll go in with some of the other monkeys and hang out with them for the day. And then in the in the evening, around dinner time, we'll just let him loose, or he'll even ride down in our Gator 4x4 and, and come in the house and have his dinner and watch a movie. So it's so tough to be Amos. So, yeah, this is one of our success stories. So we um, said we'd never have monkeys. At least I said we'd never have monkeys. I hated monkeys and all. Now we've got several um, now I'm monkey mama. Imagine that. So, uh, so yeah, that's famous Amos, and uh, he's going to check out what's going on over here. So it's okay for him to drink Gator. It's all right for him to drink Gator. Yeah, he's just like a child, so um, we do have to watch his sugar intake and everything. Just like a child, they can get diabetic and everything. Um, he's he was checking out your thing to see what you're doing over there because he has done uh, selfies before and everything. So. <laughs> So yeah, that's Mr. Amos checking everything out. So uh, yeah, we'll go put him away and then we'll go visit some of the other animals. Uh, you'll recognize the next group that we're gonna let out. Um, in the morning time, we run around and let certain animals out and, and do our thing. So <laughs> Amos is just curious what's going on now. <laughs> He's gotta be involved in everything. You ready, Amos? You can come get him. 
Okay, go ahead and get Kelly's going to take them. And... All right, come on. There he goes. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys ready to go see some more animals and let some of the, the beasts loose, release the beasts? There you go. All right, let's do it. Do we have any questions from the audience uh, just this moment before we move to the next area? Okay, the only one we had was the about question the about his Gatorade. Yep, everything okay. so far. A lot of times we mix his Gatorade with water too, and the same with fruit juices and everything, so it's not straight on sugar and, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> Hit me with some questions. About a 15 second delay between. Okay. This one, this one, monitoring. Just a heads up, team, the chat is about 15 seconds behind us, so we'll see some questions popping up shortly. All right. Does every monkey have their own room or cage? No, a lot of them share them, but a lot of them can also go from cage to cage. Um, yeah. We've been mixing several different monkeys, letting them get to know each other and everything. So we have several different housing areas right next to each other. So before we introduce a couple of monkeys, we'll have them in the two different cages. And if it looks like they'll get along, then we'll go ahead and introduce them. And um, it's always supervised and everything, but um, very rarely, there's only one we really can't mix with the others right now, and that's Choop, um, because Choop has massive upper and lower canines, and he could very easily hurt one of the others. But um, he does have a tunnel to go back and forth between cages, and when we have monkeys in the other cage, we'll let them close to the monkeys so they can interact and everything. So, but yeah, we mix our monkeys and everything, and they, they go to different play areas. The basic answer to the other one was, do the animals get to interact with one another, and are there some good friends? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, a lot of you might know Rosie the happy monkey, the little white face. She's got her own pet pig, Pigorny Weaver, Pee-wee. Um, you guys have met Pee-wee before. She runs around wearing a tutu, and I think last year she had a Wonder Woman costume on or something like that. But yeah, so uh, Rosie has her own pet pig. Um, she's helped me raise several of the skunks. Um, yeah, she's, a bunch of the animals will mix with other ones. Um, at one point, you'll probably meet Hannibal's group. Hannibal's our bobcat that lives with three house cats and Louise the raccoon, who raised them all. So, yeah, a lot of our animals interact with each other. All right, uh, last call for any questions before we move on to the next segment. And of course, if you always have a question about another animal, if we've already covered and we move on, you can go ahead yeah, and ask it to you can always ask us. We can always come back to them. I heard you. All right, well, we're going to go to a brief intermission now so we can move to the next area. Uh, please enjoy the uh, slideshow or whatever the tech team has ready to go for us while we move so you don't have to watch Shaky Cam all the way over to the next area. Yep, slide to that. All right. That didn't go too bad. We could still hear you, though. Thank you for reminding me. All right. Uh, so, Kristen, where are we headed to now? We are going to the cockatoo. Oh, boy. We didn't let them loose yet, so you can see what we do with everybody. We can go on Shaky Cam Walk right now. See, you can see the property. You can see some of the cages. Just let me know when you're ready to have them come out. All right. Can you um, unlock the door for me? 
I'm going to name him George. Is it crooked or is it just no, after we do this? It's are we able it's, to it's, walk it's straight. We're crooked. Okay. Right so it's hanging. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. It's just for the longer, longer walk. Right, right, right. If you look here, if you're straight. All right. You're good to go. When, whenever you're ready, we are good to go. Okay. So uh, as you hear behind me, we've got the cockatoos. <laughs> and these guys are quite characteristic of, uh, of cockatoos. They're very loud, very obnoxious. And at night, we lock them down in a secure area because occasionally we do have rogue raccoons that come on property that would try to get them, try to eat them, uh, grab them. So we lock them down at night, but then we release them in the daytime. And usually all our neighbors know when we release the cockatoos. So if you guys are ready, we release the beast. Hey, George. Hi, George. <laughs> Hi, George. <laughs> so we've got George, Maggie, and Spartacus. We call them Party Sparty coming out. They love visitors. All these guys came in at different times from different owners. So uh, Maggie, <laughs> Maggie actually came uh, from a woman that passed away. She raised Maggie and she was very old and passed away and willed Maggie to her daughter. And her daughter was afraid of Maggie um, and locked her in a closet basically for three years. So Maggie occasionally does what I call demon talking, which is really creepy. Um, it's basically talking that you would hear through a door. It's kind of mumbled and all. Uh, George obviously says, hi, George, but that's pretty much all George says. And then Party Sparty here, he doesn't talk really, but he does do a various amount of sounds. Um, if you want a talking bird, this is not the type to get. You want a parrot like an African gray. But these guys mimic sounds really well. Um, Spartacus does a Black & Decker drill, three different speeds. He strips the screws. Um, he does a, a really annoying metal grinder. He does a hammer and actually hammers when he does it and all. Um, these guys are usually extremely loud, and that's why people get rid of them. That and the fact that they can live 100 years. So uh, we get a lot of these type animals turned in. People think they want them for pets and all, and then they get real loud, they get real messy. So that's why these guys live outside. In fact, um, all this whiteness, it gives off a powder. And when we first got Sparty and Maggie, they lived in the house and that didn't last long because I was dusting their room every couple days because of the amount of powder that was in there. So Maggie's kind of dancing a little bit. You guys gonna dance? You gonna rock out? Rock out, guys, rock out! There you go. There you go, there it is. Yeah, don't you want that in the house? Yeah, now you're tracking. So yeah, they're a lot of fun to have, but a lot of noise and a lot of maintenance to keep up. So. Hello. So yeah, that's the cockatoo group. That's uh, these guys are the Malukan cockatoos. We've got a few others in a different area. So. And Maggie's doing her demon talking. I don't know if you guys are hearing that, but Maggie May! You demon talking? What, George? Yeah. So I did notice one question that came through earlier, yep. and it was, have the animals noticed a decline in visitors since they the have. pandemic? They have, actually, yeah. All us volunteers have stepped up. We're doing more enrichment around here. We're trying to spend more time with them. Um, some of the volunteers have been coming out more often, but these guys especially, they love showing off in front of groups, especially if we have kids groups out here. The more the kids interact and laugh and, and talk and, and get crazy, the crazier they get and everything. So yeah, it, it has been a little more difficult with the fact of us not having as many people come through. We still have little tours come through, but nothing like we used to and not as frequently as we used to also. 
So yeah, that is something they have noticed. And our guys being so social, it, it has been a blow to them. So any other questions? Not yet. You guys want to move to the next animal? Over. These guys are being really quiet today for a change. A lot quieter than normal. A lot quieter than normal. Yep, absolutely. Oh, so. here we go. Uh, can Spartacus do the truck backing up? Actually, he, he can do it, but making him do it is another thing. Yeah, Sparty um, just does that when he wants to do it, when he wants attention. So a lot of times he'll do that if, if he's by himself to get attention. That hasn't been one of his more common things lately. We actually have a lot of questions. Oh, a lot of questions. All right. The cockatoo. <laughs> Somebody's dancing around the bottom. You going to run, run, run? Run, run, run. Hop, hop, hop. Uh, next question is, can you take some of the monkeys on tours? Can, what kind of tour? What, is, what do they mean? They, did, they didn't elaborate. Okay. Yes, monkeys go on tours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rosie and Amos go out all the time with us. Um, I've been taking some of the others out a little more to get them used to it and everything. So, yeah, the monkeys do go out on tours and stuff. Okay, next question is, uh, what do they eat? I'm probably assuming it's more towards the, the cockatoos. cockatoos. Um, the cockatoos get a very special diet. It's called Pretty Bird. It's actually a very, um, very expensive diet. But all the birds that we've had come in that have had health problems, like really bad health problems, we get them started on Pretty Bird right away, and it pretty much clears up. Um, in addition to the pretty bird, they do get um, seeds and nuts, peanuts, of course, for treats and all. But that's not an everyday thing. Um, some people think that birds need seeds every single day, and a lot of times that causes more problems if that's all they're getting. And then we have uh, days like today where we usually get public produce donated to us, and we go through it, and we'll give them fruits and veggies as well. So they get a wide variety of stuff, but their main every single day diet is the pretty bird. So, and that came highly recommended by our vet who also has a, a cockatoo. So, which at some point I'm probably gonna be getting when she starts traveling. So we'll have four, yay. <laughs> Next question is, are they native from Florida? No, they are not native to Florida. These guys, um, the Malukan cockatoos are actually native to Indonesia. Most cockatoos are native to Australia, but these guys, um, they're the largest of all the cockatoos, the only ones that are kind of like a pinkish and, and orange underneath their feathers. Um, so these guys are kind of special. Being native to Indonesia, a lot of people don't know this, but when the pet trade started, uh, so many of these birds were taken off the island that there weren't enough good breeding pairs and they were becoming, um, becoming endangered, almost extinct. So all the cockatoos you're going to find, um, especially Malukan cockatoos, I'm addressing all those guys that you're going to find in the U.S. right now have been hatched here in the U.S. So they are no longer taking them off the island as far as I know. Uh, next question is, do they usually talk with the visitors? Yeah, they, they very much interact with the visitors. We know. Yeah. We know all about that. Yes, we do. <laughs> So they rarely are quiet birds. And that's why, you know, a lot of people get them because they want a talking bird and all. But like I said, this is not the type you want for a talking bird. Yes, they can talk, but they primarily like to mimic noises, which can be very, very annoying. So um, like I said, if you want a talking bird, you want something like an African gray or a parrot, an Amazon parrot of some kind. So these guys can get very annoying very fast. <laughs> So the next question is, I'm going to skip just for now because we have some follow questions to the other questions that were asked earlier. Um, the other person that asked about the, uh, the tours for the monkeys right. followed up and said, um, I meant to ask, do they go on tours like the visitors do? Or like the visitors used to? Like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure... Do they, do they, you, you take them around to other locations? Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally. Um, yeah, they go, uh, certain ones go for rides with me and all like they've been to the bank. Um, they'll go to, to like Panera. <laughs> yeah. They'll go to like Panera or McDonald's. We'll go through the drive through. Um, yeah, it depends. They're not like service animals that you can take into a Walmart or a Publix. 
so they don't go out that often. But if I'm just running a few errands here and there that I don't have to get out of the car or anything, um, we do that. Amos actually can open the car door, so I don't take him where I'm getting out of the car for any reason. <laughs> but yeah, because he rides just loose in the car. He's like a little kid. But um, yeah, we they go out with us. Next question is, uh, how much does it cost per day per bird to feed? Oh God, I, I have no idea. Um, the bags of Pretty Bird, they're close to $50. And with all the birds, because we also have um, five, five macaws and like five parrots at this point, I might be missing somebody. But yeah, we'll go through like um, a bag probably once every four weeks, three to four weeks. So not too so. bad. It's not too bad, but yeah, we, thank God we get the, the public donations and people randomly volunteers bring in peanuts and stuff like that. Um, so it does help. But yeah, that's pretty expensive bird food and, and that's an expense every month that we go through. Another question is, are they awake at night? I'm assuming no. probably no. No, no, um, because what we do is they actually do have food and water in their lockdown and we usually leave that open in the daytime. Um, but primarily at night is when they go in, um, at dinner time, we close them in there and they'll, they'll do the majority of their eating, eating their dinner. And then they go to sleep. Thank God. <laughs> so. Um, last question was, and this was the one that I skipped over from earlier okay. is they want to know if I can feed them. If you can feed them, we can come back and bring treats. Okay. So yeah. We you know might we might revisit that depending on uh, how time goes. Yeah. Um, are there any final questions before we move on to the next? I cannot believe they're being so quiet. <laughs> they're they're trying to figure out what you guys are doing. All right. So what's our next stop on the list? Kiwi. Kiwi. Kiwi All Dakota right. Monday. Because I got to medicate Kiwi. All right. Well, let's go see Kiwi. All right. Cool. We can also uh, check these guys out as we go by. Oh, of course, everybody goes in their house now. <laughs> we got right. Candy Andy in the window there. Oh, we have, a we have another question. And there are the birds. And there's the birds. We walked oh, yeah. away. Okay, so this is going general, I guess, for okay. care itself. Okay. Uh, are you guys self-taught or have degrees, and how did you get started? Oh, that's a good question. Um, self-taught, yes. Worked with a lot of people that had different animals. Yeah, see what happens when we walk away? Yep, they're attention hounds. Yeah, no, um, actually, I've been doing this since I was 18, and I'll be 55 very shortly. Um, I worked with a number of different people that had different animals, um, so I learned a lot on the on the job. Um, I did a lot of research as well, which these days is a lot easier with a computer, but I was, I was book learning. Um, but what you read in books and all, you, it can't compare to, um, to what you learn on the job. So I recommend anybody uh, that wants to work around animals, you work with people that have the type of animals you want to work with. That's the best learning you can ever do. So yeah, it's, it's on the job training for the most part. So we had a question come in that says, what is a Kudamundi? Well, you're in luck. We're getting ready to see. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Now, little Kiwi, she's a special girl. She's actually getting uh, several different medications today. And what I do is I put it in baby food. I just crush up the pills, put it in baby food. And she's very food motivated, so this is not a hard process. <laughs> she's right over here. And I'll explain. Uh, you guys can come over here, see her, eat her meds. She's all ready. Now, Kiwi here, we've hand raised. We've had her since she was a baby. She loves people. She was raised in my house by all the volunteers, and she loves attention. And it's no problem medicating her. Um, you can probably notice when she moves around, she's got a bandage on her tail. These guys typically are um, very obsessive type animals. It's really weird. We had one named Momo a long time ago that was a rescue. And um, Momo had a fascination with feet. He was obsessed 
with feet and shoes. Um, so much that sometimes we had to take our shoes off before we came in because he'd be so obsessive over them and all. Uh, Kiwi, sometimes she'll grab people's cell phones, um, things like that. But she, uh, what we think happened was we think she got a bite on her tail, a mosquito bite or something on the end of her tail, and she obsessed over it so much, she actually bit, she self-mutilated herself. She bit into her own tail. And so we had to have that surgically amputated. And everything was good. Um, when we took the bandages off the next time, everything was good until the very end of the bandage was taped to some of her fur on her tail. And when we took that off and took some of the fur, just a tiny bit of the fur off, we think she obsessed over that and rebit her tail and reopened it. So we had to have another bit of her tail taken off. So um, right now, one of the meds she's on is um, Kitty Xanax, basically, uh, just to mellow her out just a little bit through the healing process. She's on antibiotics, of course. Um, this is a very weird animal. I don't know if you can hear over the, over the cockatoo, but she chirps like a bird. Um, Kiwi here actually does a lot of my school programs and summer camps when I was doing those, when we were able to do them. Um, she's kind of fun to bring out because before I even bring her out to the kids, she's in a carrier, the kids can't see her, and I'll call her and she'll make her bird noises and all the kids are expecting a bird and then I bring her out. And um, immediately when they see it's not a bird from that nose, they guess she's an anteater. And we say no. And then usually when they see the tail, which was much longer before, they would think lemur. Um, this is actually a South and Central American raccoon. And the reason why they're in the raccoon family is because what they do with their back feet. This animal is actually as fast under the limb of a tree as she is on top. They can totally invert their back feet and run underneath things. Like on top of this cage, she can easily hook her feet in and run very quickly. So <laughs> she's being very cute right now. I think, actually, I'll take her out. I don't know if she'll hang on because, you know, she just got her, her kitty Xanax, but we can try it. Come here, Kiwi. Oh, my goodness. Such a good girl. See, she'll hook her feet. You can kind of see where she's kind of hooking her feet. Now she just wants to get down and run. Yeah, she's just going to drop if I let her go. And she's playing right now. She loves to play very playful not something i'd ever recommend as a pet but she's very cool to work with all the volunteers love her she works as she walks on a leash and a harness right now she's giving me love bites she's not biting at all so very cool animal and most people don't realize uh what they are and how important they are to the environment they're a part of the food chain in the in the amazon and everything in the rainforest these guys primarily live up in trees uh, big animals like jaguars, panthers, snakes, they'll go after them and everything. And these guys are omnivores. They eat insects. They eat plants of all kinds. This little girl gets a regular diet of monkey biscuits and a lot of fruits and veggies. Oh, now she's getting wound up. Now she wants to play. That kitty Xanax just hasn't kicked in yet. So we're going to put her back in there before she gets in trouble. You can see that bandage on her tail. So, uh, Hopefully this time she won't mess with her tail. We're gonna leave the bandage on a little longer and hopefully with the kitty's neck, uh, she'll be just fine. And she's on pain meds too, so it's all good. So um, yeah, very, very interesting animal. Um, they are becoming uh, more endangered. They weren't endangered before, but with all the slashing and burning of the rainforest, unfortunately, these guys are losing their home as well as all the other animals in the rainforest. So that's one reason why we bring her out, to show people there are some really cool animals out there in the rainforest and we need to protect them and just be aware of what's going on. So, Before we go on to the next exhibit, are there any other questions uh, for CARE about Dakota Mundi? Um, can you run down to get my forceps and the wraps, please? Oh boy. We're gonna, we're gonna have some fun. Questions, let's have questions. All right, no questions. So, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, we have a question. How did you get her? Did some exotic animal guide have to relinquish her? No, actually, um, she's one of the exceptions to the rule. Um, 
when we lost Momo several years ago, uh, he was very old when he died. And like I said, he was a rescue. He was in really bad shape um, when we got him. And all of us that knew Momo, the Kodamundi, uh, we were very attached and everything. And so I was talking to a breeder um, for many years. And out of the blue one day, she uh, emailed me. She says, hey, I've got some babies that um, are unclaimed, a baby that's unclaimed right now. Somebody was supposed to get her and, and didn't. And she said she's very young. And since you have experience hand raising raccoons, do you want her? And so I jumped at the chance to bring her in. And I thought she'd be a really good educational animal since all that stuff is going on with the rainforest right now. So that's how we got her. She was flown in. Um, she was a secret. She was actually a gift for the volunteers. They didn't know she was coming in. Um, in fact, I went to pick her up at the Tampa airport and I was kind of sending them pictures, like little hints that something was going on. I just disappeared for the day. So um, they were all very surprised. She was very tiny when she came in and, and just a little ball of fluff. And uh, yeah, it's been going since. So we have three questions. Okay. Uh, first one is, what do they eat? Mm -hmm. What is her favorite game to play? And how long do they live? Okay. Um, they can live roughly about about 15 years, 15 to 20 years, a little less in, in the rainforest, um, a lot less in the rainforest, actually. Um, their, her favorite food is she loves pineapple and grapes. Um, they get a lot of, she gets a lot of different fruits and vegetables. Um, like I said, when I medicate her, I use baby food. That's the easiest thing. Um, and she gets monkey biscuits. Uh, the other day though, um, one of our guys, uh, his aunt owns the 7-Eleven and he brought a bunch of sandwiches. So she had uh, a chicken sandwich one day and an egg sandwich another day um, with fruits and vegetables. So her, her diet varies um, basically like a raccoon. She can eat almost anything. Um, the other day when we brought her home from surgery, I got 50 crickets, live crickets, and just dumped them in her cage. She went nuts and loved that. Um, and what was the other question? I'm missing one. Uh, they were, how long do they live? I and and what, uh, what favorite games? Oh, she games. Like um, she loves, she loves messing with our pockets. She loves going into our pockets and, and checking out what's there and everything. Um, with me, she likes to be tickled and then she'll hop away and then she'll hop back. She loves to be tickled. So, um, the funny thing, I'll, I'll, I'll digress to when we first got her. I was training her um, in the house to come when I call her and everything. And I've got an African gray in the house. And I had to stop training Kiwi in the house because the African gray, I would go from room to room and call Kiwi and, um, and have her learn to follow me and to find me. And um, the African gray actually picked it up her my voice calling kiwi and it got to be where i call kiwi in one room and then he called kiwi in the other and poor kiwi was getting confused so that's just a funny little sideline story so now all of kiwi's training and games have been done out here so. um next question is i noticed a toddler car how do you determine what enrichments to give um, these guys, they're like little kids. The, the monkeys, the raccoons, uh, kiwi, they're all like little kids. So um, a lot of the toys that you're seeing were either uh, brought in by volunteers or a lot of them I actually picked off the side of the road and bleached and cleaned up and gave to them. So um, it's just we give them so many different things and change it out. They have stuffed animals and everything. Uh, it's not something specific per animal. Um, so yeah, we just, we change out their toys and give them all kinds of fun stuff, but it's basically like little kids in a playroom. And I think the last question we have is, uh, she, well, no, we have a few more. Um, is she going to be bred for an environmental program? No, we are not planning on breeding her. There's breeders out there. That's what they do. We're not looking to breed. Um, next question is, can they interbreed with other types of raccoons? Not to my knowledge. That okay. is a really good question, but I don't believe so. I've never seen it. Uh, next question. Do they have opposable thumbs? Uh, no, actually, she doesn't. She's She's got thumbs, you know, just like a raccoon. They're, I guess they are opposable to a certain degree, but they're not like a monkey or quite like ours. They can hold on to things like that with their thumbs. So I guess to a certain degree, they are opposable, but um, not, not quite like us and the monkeys. Um, so last question I think we missed was, uh, how long do they usually live? 
um, I think I touched on that. Did I'd you? say, okay. yeah, about about 15 years or so, 15, 20 years, less less than that in the wild. Most animals live a lot less than the wild. Okay. The harsh life. Well, we are going to move on to the next. Uh, what do you have in store next for us? We're going to feed somebody. Uh-oh. Here All we go. All kinds of fun. All right. And you guys are going to recognize the next animal. We have this one and this one. <laughs> So you know what? Let me have this more. We'll do this one next. I think we had this one out with you guys before. All right, come on over here. Maybe not, maybe. We've gotten here a little gilly gator. Gilly gator in training, and uh, we don't feed any live out here. This is a rat pup that uh, came in frozen, and we thawed it out. And he's hissing right now because he doesn't know what's going on. Gilly, here. And now he doesn't know what's going on. As you can see, he's got quite the appetite. And he's going to run with it. And this guy is being raised around the red foot tortoises. They can be mixed. Somebody asked that earlier, the animals that we mix. So these guys can be mixed. In fact, it's kind of funny. The other day, one of our volunteers saw, um, saw Gilly grab a tomato. And he's strictly a carnivore. He's not supposed to eat things like that. It's not going to hurt him. But he saw the tortoises eating and he thought he'd try it. And then the day after that, I came by and I saw one of the tortoises swimming in the pool with Gilly. So yeah, these guys are, are a little mixed up on what they are and everything, but as long as they're cohabitating and everything, I'm happy with it. It all works out. They've got a nice area to live. So any questions about Gilly Gator or the Redfoot? And Redfoot tortoises, by the way, do make really good pets. If you're looking for a pet tortoise, this is a really good kind to get. So we did have one question come in, and I know this is going to be a no, but they want to know if you can if you can pet the gator. If you, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Do they want to know if I can pet it or if you can pet it? I, I don't know. I don't want to. <laughs> you guys, you guys have all met Brutus before. We're gonna actually feed Brutus in a second. So another question while you're opening that up is, um, have you been able to release any of the animals back into the wild that you've taken care of? Good question. Um, early on, I used to do some releases and then laws changed as far as with uh, the state agency and everything. So now I work with a rehabber. Um, basically, they get the animals, the Florida natives that can be released, that can be rehabbed and released. I get the animals that they can't keep that are non-natives. So we kind of work closely together. Um, so we each have our own specific thing. So if they get in an animal, say a monkey or something like that, um, then it pretty much will come to us. They don't deal with that. And then if we get in an injured animal, we put it, take it to them. So we all work together on that. So let me see if I can grab Gilly. He's gonna run probably. Not fast enough. <laughs> All right, let me bring them out and say, and the tortoises are following me. <laughs> so yeah, there's Gilly Gator. He's pretty, pretty pissed right now because I caught him. I usually don't handle them right after they eat, but nothing bad's gonna happen. You guys want to pet? And come on, please. you can pet him. No, he just, he just did number one all over you. What? Yeah. Gatorade. <laughs> That's Gatorade, folks. I missed it. It must not be that bad. And yeah, now he's kind of calming down. Um, we have a question. Have you been injured by any of the animals? Hell yes. <laughs> if you're doing this as long as I've been doing it and working some of the animals that I've worked, it happens. Um, to go along with that, our place takes in a lot of animals that have been abused, neglected, um, not very well cared for. They come in with mental issues as well as physical. So um, because we work hands-on with them and because we want to give them the best life possible, um, we it takes a lot of work. And I do a lot of hands-on with them. Um, I've gone out and caught several animals that uh, were being compensated or being surrendered by owners. So yeah, it happens. Um, 
nothing too major. Uh, I went to the hospital once. I'll never do that again because the hospital almost killed me. I wasn't even going to stay. Uh, that's a long story in itself. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it happens. You get bit, you get scratched. Nothing serious. The most serious thing probably that's happened was I was playing with a tiger and it, it kind of hit me in the head in a, a funny way. And, um, so yeah, my neck goes out of place every once in a while in a really bad way. So most of the injuries I get though, I, ironically, I caused myself. So I slipped off a, a ladder one time and yanked my shoulder out of place, um, which to this day still bothers me and comes out of place. So often, um, I'll be walking around. Somebody will say, did you know you're bleeding? And I'll be like, no, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of the injuries I caused myself, the, the other stuff, the animal stuff, it goes with the, the territory. Um, my mom used to worry and everything. Now I guess she's accepted or ignores it. But yeah, I mean, anybody that like a roofer can fall off a roof. So any kind of job kind of comes with possible injuries. And this one, yeah, it can come with death too, but it, it is what it is. So in a question that I think you may have touched on earlier, how can you put the gator in with the tortoises? Why not? <laughs> Actually, yeah, a lot of times I'll try to mix the animals that um, seem like they'll be able to be mixed because this was a real nice big housing area and it seemed wasted to just have, you know, have two tortoises in it when the gator also needed a place to live. So I just put them together and that's just how it is. So it depends on the animals, whether I can mix them or not and the kind of housing they get. They want me to... To, to pet the gator. So. Well, come here, man. <laughs> you had to know that was coming. Yeah, I did. All right, you're not going to just pet them. You're going to hold them. Hold under there. Hold under here. And hold that tail. Right. You're good to go. See? Yeah, Gilly, like I said, is in training, so he's kind of used to being held. We take him out quite a bit. He's uh, our secondary show gator. So, see? No problem. Yeah, no. I just got to stay away from the sharp end. Exactly. Yeah, he most likely wouldn't bite. He likes to hiss, though. He does like to hiss. Yeah, that's just a warning. I can feel the muscles in that tail. Yeah. Yeah, they swim with the tail. They use it for balance when they're climbing. This little guy could go over this fence with no problem whatsoever. A lot of people don't know that, um, especially new people moving from up north into Florida. They think they've uh, they've fenced in their pool and everything's fine, and then they wake up and find a, a gator in their pool. Yeah, they climb. So. Do we have any other questions before we move on to the next event? Or <laughs> whatever. Or <that laughs> whatever we're they doing. love you now for doing this. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, I will give you back, Gilly. All right. Thank you, thank you. Gilly says goodbye. <laughs> Silly gator tricks. Right, right. Tortoises, we're good. In you go, babe. Go, go, go. <laughs> That needs to be moderated out. I know, I know that that's. Thank you. All right. It's still on. Yep. All right. And you got a five dollar donation because you held. Your... All right. Hey, nice. made money. <laughs> We ought to just break out the next one and keep going. Hey, well, if it gets you money for care, I'm all about it. Just, just no snakes. No snakes. That's the only thing all I will do. the line of the snakes. Yep. All right. I don't know where. Oh, he's in the back corner. You guys all know Brutus. Brutus has come to the Megacons and the, the Megaplex stuff all every year, pretty much, almost. So um, we're going to feed him. I usually feed him on Saturdays, but I saved it for you guys. He's way in the back there. Can I possibly come right around here? Yeah, come on. Uh, come on. While you're while you're feeding, we had a question. Chef, does local wildlife inter ever interact with the animals? As far as um, wildlife coming on the property, you know, um, they don't interact with the animals. That's why we have secondary fences. Um, we have had road raccoons, possums. I have, have a heart traps that I just set up. In fact, this morning I walked out and um, our monkey biscuits are in a big trash can and the lid was off the trash can. So I'm suspecting a raccoon. So I'm going to have to put the have a heart trap out tonight and try to relocate that little guy. So yeah, 
and we have had snakes get in with some of the animals. Um, we have one serval, Rufio, that is an expert snake killer. Um, so yeah, we've had that happen, but nothing, nothing major, no venomous, thank God. So uh, we're gonna call Brutus and see if Brutus wants to eat. Of course, he's gonna wanna eat. Brutus, here. Come on, Brutus. A little faster, Brutus. Brutus, here. There we go. And down it goes. It may look like he's chewing, but he's not actually chewing. These guys have sharp, pointy teeth. We have flat teeth. Our teeth are for chewing. Theirs is for grabbing. And now he's going to beg. That's all you're getting right now, buddy. That is it. So yeah, they'll, uh, they'll grab something and then swallow it whole. If they can't swallow it whole, if I gave him a much bigger rat, rat um, he would death roll it. He'd clamp down on it and roll his whole body several times. So, and as you can see, we need to go in and uh, mow his area. The much bigger gator in the background is- Oh, bigger. Bubba. Yeah, Bubba gator is begging. Yeah, Bubba will get fed uh, probably tomorrow. I got to get in and mow his area and I always feed him before I mow him. He's actually pretty good. He usually stays away when I'm mowing, but we like to uh, feed him and keep him happy beforehand. So yeah, so uh, Brutus here is, is good for now. He doesn't think he is. Um, there's a question. How old is uh, Brutus? Brutus is now almost 20. 20, wow. 20, and he is a runt. Um, I rescued him from two other gators trying to eat him when he was only about three years old. Uh, I actually rescued him from a, a crappy little roadside zoo um, that basically threw him in a pen with bigger gators because he was a runt. And a runt just means he's not going to grow really big. Um, in the wild, the runts never make it. They're basically food for other alligators, snapping turtles, things of that nature. So, yeah, Brutus is a rescue. He's been with me. He was raised in the house. Um, actually, the happy monkey Rosie helped raise him. Um, not really helped raise him, but he's been around him, traveled with him and everything. Uh, Brutus walks on a leash and a harness. A lot of times in the wintertime, he comes in the house. So... I've taken showers, numerous showers with Brutus. The assistant director is taking showers with Brutus. We're all kind of lazy here. If he's in the tub, we don't bother kicking him out. So, and that's a, a rescue dog of ours, Baloo. Baloo, a few months ago, I found on the side of the road, could barely stand. He was all skin and bones. Now you can see he's looking very healthy. Nice back shot there. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, Blue, actually, we took him to the vet. He had a couple of coughing spells. We had x-rays done. He actually has heartworms, but it's past the point of treating. In fact, when I took Kiwi into the vet this week, she couldn't believe Blue was still alive. Um, he's got an enlarged heart and everything. But he's running around, playing with the other dogs, eating and drinking. So um, I was going to try to place him with somebody, but since he tested positive, he's stay he staying here for the remainder of his life. So just one of the other crazies that uh, we weren't intending on having, and it just ended up that way. So we have a few more questions. Sure. Uh, I'm assuming this is for Brutus. Um, how often is are they fed, and how much does it cost? Okay. Um, how often are they fed? In the, in the warmer months, these guys are cold-blooded, so they shut down in the winter. Um, that's why I bring Brutus in a lot of times, because he goes on all the shows with me. Um, so Brutus in the winter will maybe eat once a week. Um, in the summertime, it, it depends on how much I fed him. Like you saw the rat I just fed him. I probably won't feed him for another four days, and then I'll, I'll give him another rat or some meat or whatever. So in the summertime, um, a few times a week. In the wintertime, maybe once a week. Uh, here's, this is coming in as an honest question. Um, That's how should I be the others? <laughs> yeah. Okay. How should I behave if I see one in the middle of nature? Uh, you stay away from it. Yeah. Um, gators do not want to attack you. Not even the larger ones. There's three reasons why they attack. The first is if they've been fed, um, never ever against the law to feed wild gators because once you feed them, they think all people have food. That's just a given. They just automatically will come up to anybody and expect food. Uh, second reason is a mother with her babies or laying her eggs. Um, actually, that's the third reason. The second reason are the bull gators. Uh, the bull gators are the big daddy gators. Certain times of year, they set up territories. We're kind of towards the end of the bull gator season now. Um, but I always tell everybody around this time of year and a few months earlier, watch and listen when you're around the water. 
because the bull gator doesn't want to chase you down to attack you. They don't have a lot of energy. They're saving that energy for breeding, but they're setting up territories. And the only thing they want in their territories is a bunch of little bull gators. So you have to watch out for that. And then of course the mothers with their eggs or their babies. Um, a lot of people don't know this. The mothers will stay with their babies for two years. They will gladly kill or die for one baby or one egg. So we always tell everybody, if you see the cute little babies in the wild, don't go for a closer look. Don't grab one for a selfie. Mom is right there somewhere. So. Next question, is this an exotic animal? Uh, not in Florida. <laughs> it's a Florida native. Um, yeah, I wouldn't consider it an exotic. I mean, maybe up north, but yeah. yeah. It's not like a monkey or whatever. Uh, this is a generalized question. How, uh, how do you have to prepare for hurricanes? Oh, that sucks. In fact, <laughs> in fact, yeah, um, I just got a call the other day, a couple days ago, from my fish and game inspector. Um, every time there's storms spotted, he's required to call the Class 1 facilities, and we're Class 1 because of some of the animals we have, and just make sure everything's okay. Um, if we do have a hurricane running this way where it looks like it's going to hit, we'll uh, basically crate up all the small animals, bring them into the house. Um, we'll centrally locate... Uh, the dogs and all the other animals like that. Uh, all the bigger animals, they have been, um, their cages have, have been built, their lockdown areas have been built to withstand it. So if it gets really bad, I've got drugs on hand, I can drug them a little bit. Most of the time I don't have to do that, but I don't worry about them so much. Um, we have venomous on property and some Burmese pythons. They have to be bagged and then put in crates and locked. So uh, it's a huge, huge monumental hassle. All right. Uh, any other questions we have before we move on to the next showing? Anything? Good. All, All right, right, let's move on to the next one. All right, we're going to go, um, this area has to be weeded, so it might be hard to see them at first. We're going to go feed Godzilla. Ooh. So we're going to go back this way. We're still rolling? Yep, we're still, we're still rolling. All the animals around here. We've got the monkeys over here. Rosie, there's Rosie. Rosie is actually usually in with another group, and she's doing a sleepover with Miss Cindy over here. And apparently, they're picking flowers and plants. So, so yeah, Rosie's one of the ones, one of the lucky girls that gets to move from cage to cage. In fact, um, a little background on Cindy. Cindy, uh, I think the owner lied to us about Cindy's situation. Um, she said she had Cindy for a long time, that Cindy was almost 40 years. There's no way that monkey's almost 40 years. And I've asked several other people their opinion. They say the same thing. Um, Cindy is kind of hiding in the back. So it's not the one you're seeing up front. That's Rosie. Um, but yeah, Cindy, uh, when I went to get her, she, um, it was, we got lucky. There was two of us that went to get her. We caught her pretty quick. Um, she had no socialization as far as with people, even though the woman said it was her monkey, you could tell the monkey had no idea who she was, could care less and all that. And, um, and no socialization with other monkeys. So when we were trying to get to know Cindy, uh, I started bringing Rosie in. And we brought Rosie in because Rosie has raised other animals. Um, she's very caring, very nurturing. And um, Rosie did a few sleepovers. And by the third day, uh, I noticed Cindy coming closer and closer. And Rosie actually went up and Cindy put her hand out. And Rosie touched her hand. And then Rosie hugged her and Cindy let her hug her. That was on the third day Rosie was in there. And unfortunately, I did not have my camera on me. But um, Cindy had gotten much better ever since then. So Rosie comes in and plays with Cindy all the time. Rosie, Rose, what you buying? Rosie's foraging. These guys are foragers occasionally. And this is actually normally Amos's two-story. Amos got the condo of the group. So we did have a, a recliner up there we just took out that needed to be replaced. So sometimes I do my office work up there. So yeah, we, uh, we mix monkeys, we change them around, we offer them different environments to go in. So this is Cindy's area temporarily. Amos was in here just the other day hanging out. So, so yeah, that's Rosie and Cindy. There's Cindy. 
And then over here we have Boo and Simmy. Boo Bear! Oh my God, it's Boo Bear! I do. Boo Bear! Boo is kind of a little freak. Um, we weren't meant to keep him. Uh, we were just taking care of him. Somebody uh, had him, owned him, that lived in Vegas. And in Vegas, you do not need a permit. In Florida, you do. She crossed state, state lines with Boo. And uh, so that was illegal. And then Boo got loose, another illegal move. So Boo got confiscated by the state and was brought here. Um, I was in the process of helping the lady get her license and suddenly we weren't hearing from her anymore. Fishing Game talked to her and she basically blew him off. So uh, Boo apparently is ours now. <laughs> so um, Boo is kind of a freak. There's only certain people he likes. He and I are really close. I go in and he loves to be tickled and everything. In fact, um, I can do that right now if you have a second. We always have time for care. Thank you. You always care about care? Yep. All right. Boo Bear! I'm going to tickle you. I am going to tickle you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, come here. Boo Bear! Oh my goodness. Tickle, tickle. Tickle, tickle. So we had a question come in. Yes. Do, they, do these particular primates, um, do they eat bananas, prefer bananas? They like bananas, yeah. They love pineapple, they love grapes. Um, yeah, they, they, they get mini blueberry muffins occasionally. What he's doing right now, um, especially since I'm right here, he's, be, he's become very protective over me. That smiling at you is not a happy thing. He's flashing you, it's called flashing. It's basically a warning to tell you to stay away. So, um, yeah, he does that a lot whenever somebody's near me and everything. I'm, I'm now his person, I guess. So, oh, and he's got a fascination with nails. He loves it when I get my nails done. He likes clicking nails together. So, like I said, he's kind of a little freak, this one. There's another monkey in here, Simmy, but she's very shy around, around strangers. So, I do learn to clap. I don't think he'll do it right now. He usually does it if we're walking by and ignoring him. He'll he'll clap to get our attention. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap. And you guys saw how big his teeth are. A lot of people ask if they make good pets. I would never recommend a monkey as a pet. It's like having a, a three-year-old child, a two-year-old child that lives 40 years and can rip you a new one, to put it plainly. Uh, one of our monkeys put one of our guys in the hospital, um, ripped his hand totally open. So um, if this little guy was to grab you in the neck, he could kill you, believe it or not, a five-pound monkey. So, yeah, show him those teeth. Show him those teeth. Oh, my God. Look at those teeth. Look at those teeth. So, yeah. And they very, they get very bonded to certain people. Um, this particular monkey was bonded to women and uh, doesn't like it men as much. So each one is very different. So you never know what you're going to get when you get a monkey. You could have a really good personality monkey, and no matter how you raise them, you know, they could go the other way, too. Yeah, he loves the nails. So, what are you working at? What are you working at? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And, of course, Rosie has to get into the act. Oh, my God. It's Rosie Rose. Rosie the happy monkey. Oh, my God. Rosie can't stand anybody else getting attention. Oh, my God, Rosie Rose. So he's a, a black cap capuchin. She's a white face capuchin. And then in the back, little Cindy there is a tufty capuchin. So, what? Oh my God, oh my God. This is Rosie being so cute. Oh my God. Oh my God, Rosie Rose. Oh my God. Are you gonna, can you hop? What? And they do have a prehensile tail. This tail can grab and hold on and they can swing from this tail. Get into all kinds of trouble with the tail. Huh. And this is the monkey that helped raise a bunch of the other animals that has her own pet pig, kiwi, and all that stuff. You guys might have seen Rosie at some of the some of the gatherings. She does her big jumps and everything. Huh. What? What? Oh my goodness, crazy monkey! Crazy monkey! So yeah, that's cute little Rosie. Rosie came in with Amos on that rescue. Um, I found Rosie in a bird cage. That's where I found Rosie, Andy, and Dolly in tiny bird cages. Questions? Uh, Comments? Do they bite? Do they bite? It depends which one you're talking about and who you're talking about. Um, yeah, Rosie would rip. Rosie does 
It's not like women and children. There's only three, maybe four of us girls now that handle Rosie. Rosie will bite the crap out of anybody else. The thing is, she knows she doesn't have front teeth. Um, the four original monkeys we took in, all four of them, um, the people had pulled their front teeth. But they know they have the back teeth. So Rosie's first thing would be to scratch your eyes out, pull your hair, and then try to grab your finger and put it in the back of her mouth. Um, Boo, there's certain people that Boo does not like that he would bite the hell out of. So yeah, each individual monkey is fully different. And um, like the assistant director, Kelly, has worked with monkeys and loves the monkeys. Most of them love her, but there are certain like Boo is not, not one of her favorites and she's not one of his, so. Like little kids, everybody's an individual. Um, do these guys stay awake at night or are they pretty much no, done? They're no, they eat, um, they eat dinner in the afternoon around three o'clock, two, three o'clock. And, uh, they pretty much chill after that. So, and Rosie comes in the house a lot. I'm going to start bringing Boo in. Um, I noticed he is good about putting a collar on. So, um, I'm going to start walking him around more often and getting him out. The one he lives with, Sammy, comes in the house from time to time. So, yep. They're all individuals, just like little children, and you have to treat them as individuals. All right. Well, it looks like um, no further questions at this time, so I guess we can move on. Okay, great. Let's do it. management monkey here. This is Choop. He's actually much better than he was when he came in. Another white face capuchin. Choop is a hot mess. He's the one I was talking about that has the extremely long teeth that cannot be mixed with another monkey at this point. But we're working on a, a situation with that. I'm just going to show you how prehensile his tail is. <laughs> Yeah, Chief's a little hot mess there. He's gone through at least three owners we know of before us. So he has not had a very stable upbringing. The last owner had to get rid of him because uh, Chief was loose in the house and the guy got a new girlfriend and he viciously attacked the girlfriend. So that's when the state said it has to go. So once an animal comes in under these kind of conditions, it stays with us for life. Even though we don't go in with sheep, we spend a lot of time with them. We'll give them treats and give them new enrichment all the time. So that's his tunnel we normally go through. Um, right now we temporarily have King Julian and Nigel over here. We're redoing some of their housing, so we put them back the door. Oh, and then we've got the, as I call them, the big ass tortoise. That's Dozer. Dozer uh, came all the way from Michigan. Somebody had him up there, and that climate is not conducive to a tortoise like this. He's an African spur thigh. He will get bigger than this. Um, he's thinking of going swimming. They don't often go in water. He's kind of a freak. And you can tell his shell is all messed up. We've got to do more work on it, but that's pretty much because of the environment he grew up in and the food that he was fed. So... And those guys are a very common pet, and they shouldn't be because they, they'll get over 100 pounds and live over 100 years. Very destructive, extremely destructive animals. They dig tunnels big enough for us to go into. So that's Gozer. And this guy, if you guys, hopefully you'll be able to see him. I'll call him up. Hopefully he's outside. Yep, he's outside. Can you go around the side here? Gonna meet us back there. Oh, yeah. All right, this is Godzilla. He's a black throat monitor from Africa. He will get bigger than this. Godzilla. Yeah, they want me to hold him. There is no way. There, I don't hold him. I go in with him. In fact, I got to go in and we. Godzilla. Godzilla, here. Come on, Godzilla. Something's got his attention back there, which means there may be a rodent or a lizard he's after. Godzilla, here. Come on. Come on, boy. There we go. Keeping in mind, he'll get bigger than this. 
This guy is strictly a carnivore. He only eats meat, and that'll be gone in a second. That's a jumbo rat. He was an ex-pet. When he came in, he was cramped in a tiny uh, aquarium, much smaller than what he should have had. The guy was not feeding him properly. Um, it was somebody, somebody bought it as a personal pet and then was living with, uh, had just gotten um, a girlfriend pregnant and moved in with a girlfriend and when, uh, and the girlfriend lived with her mom. So when the grandma to be found out how big this thing gets, then uh, it had to go. So he'll double in size pretty much to give you an idea. And that rat will be gone in just a second. There we go, down the hatch. Not something I would recommend as a pet. And you don't see very often these guys, but you do see the Asian water monitors and those type animals as pets. So not something I'd ever recommend. Most exotics I would never recommend. So he's, he's a pretty cool guy though. And he's pretty good with me going in and weeding and everything, but I don't let anybody else in with him because if he bites, it's going to be a very bad bite, especially with the bacteria in his mouth from eating dead things. So who's next on our list? We are going to go let Chimera out. Ooh. And one of the tigers, Katrina. We're going to let the big guys out to play. So, and as we're looking around, these cages that you see, these housing areas, um, th this is where some of the money has gone to for for us that you guys have raised. This big area, we could not have built without you guys. Um, this is totally funded by you guys. So um, this is the play area for the big cats. We're going to walk all the way around the back side. You can see the sizable area. It's got a pool of set toys. There's three tigers and a liger that share this area. And this is totally built with the funds that you guys raised for us. So in addition to one of the cages back here, it was also totally funded by you guys. So we'll kind of give you a walk around. We've got Tyrion the tiger over here. Tyrion. Mm. Fresh tiger smell. Yeah. Fresh tiger pee. There's Tyrion. For any of you, for any of the, you that uh, were at Megaplex a couple of years ago, uh, he was there and he was right. pocket sized at that point. That's right. Um, I forgot about that. He was there. He's not pocket sized anymore. No, he is not. <laughs> yep, he's almost full grown now. He may get a little bigger, but not by much. And he's going to show you what male tigers do. Basically, he's marking his territory. Yeah, let's not be in... In the way of that? Yes. Yeah, let's not. And then on the other side, we have Daenerys. He's, he's sometimes playmate. Miss Daenerys is a sweet tiger. She's a very well behaved tiger. She came all the way from California with our other little girl, Katrina. <laughs> we knew those lenses. Oh, what? You do have insurance on your phone, right? <laughs> we're going to take you guys into this area as we release. Well, actually, where's Kelly? Uh, Why is Kelly not up here? I specifically asked for Kelly. <laughs> Kelly's the assistant director. She handles these animals with me and everything. I thought she was going to let out Katrina, but apparently not. I'll tell you what, if you guys want to come in here, I will go let out Katrina. And then by the time Kelly gets up here, we can let out the baby. baby. He recently turned yeah. three, didn't he? He's not three yet. September. Go on in there and I'll run around. All right, you guys ready for Miss Katrina? The baby, a baby tiger girl. Oh. Thank you. 
she's doing right now is uh, sharpening her claws. Katrina also came from California. She's one of the tigers that we regularly go in with, several of us, very well behaved. Weird thing about her is um, she's what I call a tiny tiger. She's probably part of Sumatran, which is very rare, very unusual. Um, most of the Sumatrans are only owned by zoos, and she came from private facilities. We don't know how they would have possibly gotten a Sumatran, but we think she's part of Sumatran, given the size, she's very small. Right now, she better not be peeing in that pool. But yeah, you guys can see what your money went for it in building this area. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna have you walk back out and we're gonna let the baby out. You can watch that and then you can come back and watch them run around together. Hi, buddy. Remind me to come back or somebody can come back and watch that. Okay. Well, we're going to clean her. So. of big cats. Um, he's not supposed to exist. He's two parts lion, one part tiger. His mom was a liger. Ligers are not supposed to reproduce. So she uh, she got lucky. She was a bit of a hoe, I guess. And uh, Tamara and his brothers were born. His one brother is up in Illinois. We don't know where the others are. Um, being a hybrid cat, he's going to be unusually big. Ligers are huge. I think he's gonna outdo a liger. He is not even three years old yet. And he's get, he's getting close to 650, maybe 700 pounds at this point. Very tall in the shoulders. I've never seen a cat that tall in the shoulders ever. Um, so he's kind of unusual. We're gonna go ahead and lock ourselves in here and attempt to let him out to play with his sister Katrina. They're all best buddies. Hey buddy. And he was originally raised in the house with uh, some of the other animals, with my dog Jack, and raised by all the volunteers. So he's very well behaved, he has manners, but he is a big boy and sometimes forgets how big he is. Sometimes he thinks he's a lab cat. Just a minute, buddy. So we had a question. Yes. Do, uh, do ligers chirp like... Uh... Actually, the funny thing is, when uh, he doesn't do it anymore, stop. Um, but on occasion, he did. When he got in trouble, he'd apologize that way. All right, we're going to attempt to let him out. Hi, baby. Oh. Uh, it's usually his big play day with all of us, and now he's probably going to act like he doesn't want to go out. Yeah, clean. Well, Kelly was clean. One out. Clean Aunt Steph is over there. A little too long. Hey. And if a 700 pound cat doesn't want to do something, you're not going to make it. He sees one of his favorite people over there, Aunt yeah. Steph. There you go. Oh. He loves Aunt Steph. So um, being two parts lion, he is a pride animal. And um, we've got a, a small pride going here, uh, mostly females. <laughs> He's kind of picky that way. I'm still mom. And everybody is his part of his pride is his aunt. And right now he's tearing off a uh, big track from a, a bobcat that was given to us. That's one of his favorite toys. He can drag that around like it's nothing. It took like five of us to get that in there. Extremely strong animal. So we had a few more questions come in. Yes. Uh, one of them is, um, I'm gonna go out of order here, everybody, so apologize. Uh, you personally see the big cats do what house cats do? All the time. Yep, absolutely. In fact, they're, they're playing right now. You might see um, you might see what's going on 
if you watch long enough, um, tigers are very athletic. The lions tend to be more clumsy. So she'll get him going, chase there, and then he'll give in easily because he's lazy and just doesn't doesn't feel the need. And the other question was, uh, what are the qualifications of volunteers for care? Um, we don't take volunteers very often because we've got such a good senior volunteer base and given the animals that we work around, it can be very dangerous. So once in a great while, if you follow us on Facebook, we'll um, announce an orientation. And the orientation is when we're bringing new volunteers in, we lay down a long health car around here and everything, and then um, you can see if this is something for you. So um, you just have to watch our Facebook. I don't know when we're going to do our next our next uh, orientation because, um, like I said, we've got a really good base right now, and it slows us down actually when we do that for quite a while. So. Another question? Uh, no, no other questions just yet. Um, I think we'll give it like another minute or two and then hop off to the next area. Because everyone's yeah. like, cats. Yeah, um, to give you an idea how much she eats, our tiny tiger, uh, she's only eaten right now anywhere from six to eight pounds of meat a day. In the winter, that goes up to 10 at least. Um, the bigger tigers, Tyrion right now is the biggest of the tigers, and he's eating about... Um, 12 to 17, roughly, a day. The baby. <laughs> the baby, the toddler, as we put it, um, he right now is eating anywhere between 15 and 20 pounds a day. Um, for a while, he was eating consistently 20 pounds every single day. That's unheard of in hot climate. Um, I had a big tiger that would eat 20 to 22 pounds in the winter, but I've never had a cat eat, uh, eat 20 pounds in the, in the hotter climate. So. Um, on to kind of rolling on that same subject, what is their favorite meat? Uh, with him, it's deer meat. And he is extremely picky. Lions tend to be picky, very, very picky. Um, there's certain meats like the beef that we get in, he will not eat, but we've been working with another sanctuary that occasionally gets donated steaks and everything. He'll eat the hell out of an, an Angus steak, but yeah. So Wouldn't he's, we all? yes, he's, he's kind of spoiled. He gets rump roast and all that, but deer meat by far is his favorite. Uh, this is a generic question. So outside of Megaplex, what is a good way to donate to care? Um, you can just go to our website. We are redoing our website, but, um, we have PayPal on our website. So you can do monthly or just one-time donation. Um, that definitely helps. Even like some of the people we've had some do $5, $10 a month donations. That helps. I mean, it may not seem a lot to, to the person donating, but every month with several people doing that, it adds up. So you can imagine what our meat bill is for the big cats alone. Um, I've lost track of it at this point. So, but yeah, it, and plus they get vitamins and everything else. We are lucky fish and game. Anytime they have a deer that uh, somebody's poached or that gets freshly hit by a car, they'll bring it out here and I personally butcher it out for them. That's all kinds of fun. That's a fun part of my job. But yeah, it makes me happy that we're able to do that for the cats. All right. I do not see anything new. So uh, let's move on. Let's move on. All right. I thought there'd be more big cat questions. Yeah. Everybody must just be awestruck. <laughs> yeah, with these guys. With Chimera, yeah, it's like, uh... Yeah, he's, he's huge. He's huge. Okay, you got this? All right, so we're going to track back where we were. Jackie's going to love this next part. Oh, must be time for the foxes. <laughs> My ghost fox. So you guys have never met these foxes. Hi, Flash! It's Flash and Vixen. And now they disappear. Flash, Vixen. There's Flash! These guys were extremely unexpected. There's Vixen. I call her my ghost fox back there. Um, at 12, 1230 at night, one time I was looking at my, uh, my emails and I got an email about these two being sold 
in the pet trade as breeders for a really cheap price. And right away I knew that some idiot was gonna pick them up that wouldn't care about them, um, wouldn't take good care of them and just try to breed the hell out of them because of their unique colors and sell the babies. So right away I messaged the guy that I would take them and had to go all the way to the panhandle for them. And when we brought them back, they were very underweight. Um, she was very bitey. They were both very, very shy. Uh, we got back here when it was pitch black out and I had lights. I had the Jeep up here with the lights on and all. And we had a bunch of hay in here and let them loose. And it was like they never saw hay before. They started playing in the hay. So right away they started playing. So we started introducing toys to them and everything. They're now a healthy weight. Um, we got flesh uh, neutered, so we wouldn't have any accidental breeding. Um, this has become, over the last few years, one of the fad pets, which I'm totally against. Uh, people buy them thinking they're getting a dog. It's nothing like a dog. Um, this, this whole area is completely fenced underneath because they are diggers. Um, they, uh, they're nippy at times when they play. They don't mean to break skin, but a lot of times they do because of the way their jaw structure is. Uh, and I don't know if you guys can smell it, but um, it, there's kind of a skunky smell up here. That's them running around playing. They give off a hormone that smells like skunk spray. So imagine having that there in your is. house. Uh, the, yeah. The wind just shifted. Like the wind, yeah. And now it's a good, strong smell. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you can imagine having something like this in your house. It's not going to last very long. They're going to dig up your floors. They're going to stink up the house. They're going to be nippy. Um, you won't be allowed to have, you won't be able to have any people come over because of chances of getting bit and everything. So just not a wise animal as far as a choice for a pet. So, so these guys have a permanent house here. We all go in and work with them and play with them and hang out with them. So that's Flash and Vixen. Do we have any questions about these two? Other than they're really freaking cool looking, aren't they? And I do work with other uh, facilities. There's a, a Fox Rescue, Positives, Positives Beginnings down in um, Key West. In fact, I'm kind of concerned with how their weather is going down there right now. They've adopted, um, I think, up to four foxes at this point. Two of them just came in from fur farms. And believe it or not, fur farms are still legal in the United States, which I can't even understand. Um, there's no reason for it. Uh, we have a question. How long do they live in captivity? Oh, gosh. Our guys, um, I, can't, I can't remember how old the rascal is. I'd say about 20, about 20, like a dog. That is like a dog. Uh, what, what breed are these or what genus are they? Um, honestly, we don't know exactly what they are. She looks leucistic um, because she has the blue eyes. She's definitely not an albino because an albino would have the pink eyes. But she's got the blue eyes. She's totally white. Um, he looks like he might have some Arctic fox in him mixed with something else. And right now, um, the people that are breeding these guys are just breeding the heck out of them to make money and crossbreeding different ones. So it's rare to even find a full, full on one particular type, so to speak, like a full ar ar Arctic or a full red fox. You know, a lot of them are mixed with other things. Uh, another question is, do they have any special health concerns, foxes in general? Um, just like a dog. They get the same shots that a dog gets. So, hmm. so very similar in the... Yeah, in the and, and we do have to give them flea meds every month. We make sure they have flea meds, too. So, yeah, just the general same thing as, as the dogs. All right. Do we have any other questions um, for care before moving on? We're going to go see the other foxes next. And there's that digging action now. What's really funny is um, I feed these guys separately. When I feed them, I've trained one vixen to go up top and flash to stay down below. But like if we give them, um, we give them a real mixed diet. Like one day I gave them like mini plums and Flash immediately buried his and Vixen saw that and went and unburied it and all. What's really funny about these guys, quirky about foxes is they'll always dig to bury something, but then they'll cover it up with their nose. It's really cute. Every fox does that. Flash, Flash! All right. Well, all right. Nothing else. Let's move on to the next. Jump 
him out because he's shy around people with cameras. All right, so we had a few questions while we were walking over here. Uh, one of them is, um, I know skunks can be descented. Do any of the rescue foxes arrive descented? Okay, so the answer to that, just in case you couldn't hear, is you cannot descent a fox. Um, let's see. Oh my God. Are you being shy? There's Loki. He's on that flash. Um, we have a question. What is the furthest you travel to rescue an animal? Probably Tennessee. Tennessee? Tennessee. The two tiger girls um, were flown in from California, so I didn't have to go and get them. Um, Tennessee, I went up to get Spartacus. I'm trying to think where else I've gone. I'm drawing the blank on that. I know I've gone other places. Yeah, Tennessee's probably the furthest. And that was in the cold. That was not fun. I'm a Florida girl. That, that shit was not fun. <laughs> Put it plainly. So... Ginger Fox, watch, watch. Now they're going to be all shy. Usually Ginger comes back to watch her belly rub. Rascal's laying down. Oh, oh my God, Ginger Fox, I never got on my God. Oh, you know. So yeah, you guys might recognize Loki. He's kind of gotten shy. He's gotten shy. He's still a handsome boy. Yep. So the, the story with Loki is that... Um, Care had gotten Loki specifically kind of for Megaplex uh, when he was a small uh, baby kit. And uh, a few of us got to come out and see him when he was tiny. And the hopes were that if Megaplex was going to be alive in Presence Con this year, that Loki was going to come with and be able to do meet and greets just like Ginger does. But um, as the pandemic has kind of put a big stop to that, um, this is the best we can do for Loki right now. Jen, hi Jen. Hello, Ginger. Hello, Ginger. Yeah, actually, um, it's pretty wet in here right now. We had a really bad storm, so I think one of the things we're going to be doing with any money raised is to replace this, this roof. Um, this table also needs to be, be replaced. It's been here since we built this cage, uh, however long that was, in 06. So... So yeah, open your pockets and hearts, guys. The foxes need a new uh, enclosure, or at least a revamped enclosure. So, uh, what are you doing? She's trying to bite me. Are you biting my butt? Oh, she rub it. She rub. She sent marking she me. me. <laughs> she is sent marking me. That's just what I need. Fox smell on me. Well, Eliza will really like that. <laughs> Sorry, I hit something on my phone. <laughs> Sorry. Where are you going, James? So yeah, you can see even the foxes love toys of all kinds. So 
I posted something really funny one Halloween um, on Instagram. I had Amos dr uh, dress up in his uh, police uniform when we first put the police car in here. And then Ginger came up, so that was his canine. So he was dressed up as a police canine, and Ginger was a sidekick. So another question came in. Yeah. Uh, does, um, uh, does CARE use volunteers for construction projects? We do, yeah. And, and that gets announced on Facebook. So even if it's not our regular volunteers, if we have a huge project that they can get involved in, we will announce that on Facebook and sometimes even Instagram. Another question. Uh, the foxes seem really active. Do they need new toys or things to keep them interested in on a regular basis? Yeah, we do. We constantly do enrichment. We give them all kinds of different stuff. So um, we haven't given them a stuffed animal in a while because that's a huge mess. <laughs> because obviously the stuffed animal doesn't last very long, um, especially with three of them. But yeah, we change things out all the time. So she's being sneaky. Somebody's sneaking up on me. Again. So, yeah, she's being really shy today with you guys all here. So, and Rascal's just in the back laying low. I don't know if you guys can even see Rascal. He's a uh, silver tip fox owned by a 16-year-old girl that uh, got bit, got her room dug up and sunk up and didn't want him anymore. So, in fact, that's why we got Ginger, because his old fox buddy passed away of old age and... Um, he got very depressed. And so we picked up Ginger specifically for Rascal, for a buddy. And Ginger, you can tell if you look at her tail, that's the last bit of her coat that still hasn't fully blown out yet. It looks like she's got two tails. So. And these guys are funny because um, my house is right, right behind here. And when I have the windows open, if they're playing, running around getting all crazy. They sound like a bunch of little kids laughing. She gets out very athletic. Normally she's in my lap rolling around wanting her belly rubbed, so. Any other questions? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. You know what they really like is um, the greenies that we get for the, the dogs and some of the raccoons and stuff. If you see Ginger smiling, she's got really white teeth. That's because of all the greenies. She likes the greenies. I can't believe Loki is hiding somewhere. Yeah, he's underneath the yeah. bottom. He's yeah. looking right at all of us. Is he he's underneath what? The, um, he's under the, the, table. the bench. The bench. He's my Ginge. Loki! Oh, no! Oh, Lucky's just being a freak. She's just being a freak, too. If I don't pay attention to her, she'll probably come right up. She'll make me have to be a liar now. Oh, no! She couldn't take it! She couldn't take it! She's rubbing all over the back of me. What? Hi! Oh, Camara the La Liger is going to love that. Can you guys even see what she's doing? She's being really obnoxious about it. All right. Any other questions? Nope, none have popped up. All right. All right, so and, uh, here's a question that came in. I'll wait till you get over so the rest of everybody can hear you. Okay. But, um, so how do the big cats react when you have scents of other animals like you were just describing with the foxes? Oh, Camara, the Liger is going to be obnoxious. He's going to have to resent me, you might say. So um, he gets really into it. He'll, he'll smell and start drooling and rub his drool all over me, and then he'll make his phlegm face. And, yeah, um, 
each one's different that even um actually the tiger too last time i went in with a fox smell on me she um like she got very excited i actually had to get out pretty quick with her because she got so overly excited it was kind of kicking into her wildness a little mm. bit so yeah i saw her eyes start to change and that's one thing with the big cats is um if their eyes go from yellow to green we know we're screwed so we got to get out so yeah so now we got King Julian and Nigel temporarily over here. We're dragging you all over the property today. Julian, you gotta move it, move it. Meh. Julian, meh. Good girl. <laughs> Yeah, usually these two are right outside my bedroom window and I can just open my window and they come in and hang out. Um, when I do that, though, I have to be in the right frame of mind because these guys will bounce everything off of the walls, the shelves, everything. They're very athletic and they love to jump around and bounce around and crazy. So Nigel actually came in from another sanctuary. Um, he came into their sanctuary and um, was in the house with her two male lemurs and she also has three kids and that was a little too much for Nigel. He was like just not dealing with the stress very well. And so she brought him out here for King Julian. So, and he's doing much better just having one-on-one -on -one with Julian and then when he comes in the house. And these guys are from Madagascar. And um, these are ringtail lemurs. There's several different types of lemurs. I wanna say there's 33 different types if I remember correctly. Um, but the ringtails, they used to be all over the island of Madagascar, and now in certain areas, they're extinct. They are actually becoming endangered animals. And the problem with that is um, on Madagascar, it's a very small island. The people explosion has gone nuts. Um, there's so many people now on that island just slashing and burning all the habitats to make housing. And um, so, of course, the lemurs have nowhere to go at that point. So again, it's another another bit of us splashing and burning and destroying the habitat, of course. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions. So, All right, uh, so we will move on. So these are the good lemurs. <laughs> Let me preface that. <laughs> now we're going to the other lemurs. So, Kristen, we had another uh, question come up. Uh, do you play music for the animals? All the time. Yeah, it's not so much for the animals, it's more for us. But yeah, they get into it. Um, the guys that have been hand raised here, they're all, uh, they were raised on Motley Crew. 6 a.m. is the big one now. That's my favorite band, 6 a.m. Lincoln Park, they were all raised on that. Um, in fact, Spartacus, you turn on any of those, they'll dance like crazy. I've got a blue and gold Macaw named Bosa. He's my rocker. He rocks out to 6 a.m. Um, you've got two more cockatoos behind you, a little sulfur crest and a maluca, or excuse me, not a maluca, an umbrella. This is the sulfur crest, Coco. And Casper is uh, the umbrella. Casper's uh, owner actually still volunteers with us. She comes in and all. Um, we don't know why Casper lost his feathers uh, where he used to live, but he's growing them back. Coco almost had no feathers. Uh, the bad thing was the people couldn't figure out what was going on. And my first question was, what are you feeding it? And they said, oh, it gets a lot of peanuts and a lot of nuts. And I said, well, that's the first problem. I said, does it get any veggies, fruits or veggies? She said, Mash, mashed potatoes. So I'm like, okay, we're, we're not dealing with, with right people here. And they said, the best thing that Casper loves is fat from steak or pork. So it was pretty obvious to me immediately, it was the diet that, that made this bird lose all its feathers. So they're doing much, much better now. So growing those feathers back and being healthy on the pretty bird. So, and then behind us, we have the Mississippi group of lemurs, otherwise known as the assholes. Sorry, not gonna PG that. 
Man. So I'll go ahead and right off. Why do you call them Mississippi lemurs? Because they came from Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, these guys were on um, one of our last rescues. Actually, Mississippi is probably the farthest I've gone. Um, we brought in seven animals, three kinkajous, three lemurs, and a uh, cougar. Um, we're, who are we miss, we're missing Buddha. Where's Buddha? Oh, there he is down in the back. Um, yeah, these guys are my problem children. Lenny, um, they, first of all, they didn't even have names when they came in. So we named them. Uh, Lenny is up top. He's the most social. He's a sweetheart. He always talks back and forth. Lenny, man. Good boy. <laughs> so that's Lenny. Maddie, Ma Lenny Lemur, Maddie Madagascar on the little house with a really dark face. And then we've got Buddha, who I affectionately call fat ass. Buddha actually has lost a tremendous amount of weight since he's been here. Um, these guys were thin when they came in because Buddha was eating all the food. Um, Buddha is an ass. There's no other way to put it. Buddha will try to tear us a new one every chance he gets. So we built him a lockdown in the back. So at dinner time, he gets locked in a separate area. So uh, he has gotten much healthier and everything. And lemurs in general, I call them the class clowns. These guys are the clowns of the uh, the animal world. If you look at the way Buddha's sitting, that just cracks me up. The way Buddha over here, they kind of sit like little kids at times. Except with him, he just sprawls. So we had a question come in. Yes. Um, did the show Zub, I, I, maybe Zubamafu. Zubamafu, Never give you any inspiration for caring for lemurs never heard of it so that would be a no no i just i've known people that have had lemurs and everything um i wasn't exactly looking to get more lemurs i was happy with nigel and julian uh, but when i heard these guys needed a home i bought them in um buddha tore me up pretty bad a couple of times so we had some attitude adjustments we had to make but um yeah, now, yeah, look how big he is. And, and that's mostly skin now, skin and just flapping. He may need a tummy tuck, so. Luda! Nah. Good boy, Lenny. I can always count on Lenny. <laughs> so yeah, any questions about the lemurs or? Nope, we're doing good, huh? All right. And these guys get the same diet that the monkeys get. They get monkey biscuits and then a ton of fruits and veggies. Um, the other day, they all had a piece of um, egg sandwich. So. <clears throat> Is the behavioral differences compared to the other lemurs likely to be species or be breed related or simply a product of how they were raised? Mostly how they were raised. Yep. I mean, all lemurs have specific traits, like they all zip around and everything. Um, poor Buddha couldn't even climb when he got in here. He, he was so overweight. Um, but yeah, they're very, um, how can I put it? I don't want to say they're neurotic, because it's not neurotic. They're very hyper, is what it is. They're very, very hyper animals. Um, they're also a one that people try to buy as pets, the new fad pet and all that. And they're, they're just too off the wall for most people to even deal with. I mean, literally, they need a big cage like this. Like I said, Julian and Nigel come in, but um, when they come in, I have to be prepared for a mess, and simply. They wanna know, what do you mean by monkey biscuits? Monkey biscuits, um, it's made by Missouri. It's a special biscuit, it's a special diet. Um, it's actually a full diet. Like, we, we could feed them nothing but monkey biscuits, and they would be nutritionally fine but that's boring. So we give them a ton of extra fruits and veggies and all. But um, yeah, it's a high protein and specially designed for monkeys and lemurs. So it's a solid biscuit. It is what it is. So full of all kinds of stuff they need to be ha happy and healthy. And that, that shit is expensive too, I gotta say. And we, we go through a ton of monkey biscuits. That's one of our bigger expenses actually. We go through a ton of monkey biscuits because all the monkeys get it, all the lemurs get it, the kinkajous Jews all get it. So, put a money gets it also. She doesn't definitely need it, but she also gets it. So yeah, that's that's a major expense right there. 
No, we don't have any more questions. So I think, uh, what's our next stop? Uh, we can head on down the path and eventually hit and go Z. Okay. So we'll head on down the path. Is Lola being uh, photogenic today, do you think? I don't know. I haven't been that far down today, to be honest. Oh, well, we can't forget the blondies. Oh, we cannot forget the blondes. Almost walked right by the blondes. Snow White, Betty White, and Goldilocks. That's Snow. Yep, that was Snow right there. Snow is the most outgoing one, Betty's the next one, and Goldilocks is the shy one that went straight up. So, and these are raccoons. They're, uh, they're considered blonde raccoons. They're definitely not albinos, but they have albino in their family somewhere back there. Very sweet girls. They came in with, before the eyes were even open, and Rosie, the happy monkey, actually was afraid of animals. And so um, when she started trusting me, is when these girls came in and their eyes weren't even open yet. So Rosie helped me bottle raise them. And to this day, Rosie can go in there. They play tag. Um, Rosie signs for a hug and Snow is her favorite. Snow will come up and give her a big hug and a kiss. So yeah, that's, that's another animal that I mix with another different animal. So the girls. They all think we have treats right now. That's why they're all pacing. They're like, what you got? No, we've got nothing, baby. You gotta wait. <laughs> like I used to breed these guys as pets, and then so many raccoons were turned back into them because when they hit about two, their wildness comes out. In fact, I just had a full conversation, about an hour conversation with a woman the other day that bought um, a raccoon, a regular raccoon from a breeder. Um, she raised it really well. She had it spayed and all, and it's now turning on the family, and it just turned two. Um, she's trying not to get rid of it, but I'm trying to work her through that, help her with the training and all and retraining. But, um, yeah, the guy that had so many of these turned back in, he decided to stop breeding. And then, unfortunately, one of his employees mixed the two cages of raccoons together, and they couldn't tell male from female, and the girls were born. So he didn't want them, so he called me, asked me, and I said, hell yeah, I want them. So, so that was another good Oscar the Grouch over here. There's only a couple of us that Oscar likes, and um, the two of us that Oscar likes, I'm pretty sure resemble his old owner. So it was very sad because his owner, or, um, a woman raised him from the time he hatched out of the egg, and then she got married, and of course he had already bonded to her, didn't like the husband, got loose, chased the husband around the house, and the husband made her get rid of it. Personally, I would have gotten rid of the man, but that's me. <laughs> so Oscar is here, and Oscar comes in the house from time to time, and the two of us that handle him all the time, play with him, and do what we do. So, but he's very particular. And I'm actually going to take you to this box here, see what he does. On in here. Oh, you're gonna hide now? Are you kidding me? Ralph! Ralph! Seriously? Now that's uh that's Hadari. Rufio is somewhere next door hiding. Um, this is an African serval, and that's typical of an African serval. Believe it or not, they all do that. Every single one I've ever met, the first thing they do, whether they love you or not, is to hiss at you. And now he's talking, Ralph. Hadari, Hadari, Ralph, Ralph. Now these guys in Africa live in the tall grass. Um, you don't even usually see them. And uh, what they're known for is their jumping ability. Um, first of all, you point out the big ears. The big ears help them find things in the tall grass. They can hear a tiny little lizard or snake or rodent very easily. 
but their real ability is for jumping. This little animal, believe it or not, can jump 10 feet straight up. And they're known to be bird eaters. They will jump up and grab a bird out of midair. That's one of their main diets. That is Rufio. Rufio actually came, um, he was used in TV and movie work, and then they no longer needed him, and he was sitting around in a concrete cage. And the assistant director out here actually raised him when he was a baby for that company. And so when we found out he was just sitting around doing nothing, we uh, offered to take him. And Hadari here, he's our little miracle child. He actually was caught in the backyard of one of our neighbors. Um, one day I got a call asking if any of our cats got loose. And I'm like, no, why? And they said, I've got this weird cat in my backyard. And I said, send me a picture. And they sent it. And I said immediately, oh my God, that's a serval. And we were able to catch it very easily. Um, he was basically probably just a couple weeks from starving to death. A lot of people ask us why we can't just release animals to the wild. Um, if they've been hand raised, there's two reasons. First of all, they have no fear of people anymore. So there's a greater chance of that animal coming up and attacking somebody. Second of all, um, they don't all have that natural hunting ability. He was literally starting to He had no muscle mass. And for anybody that knows anything about biology, once you lose muscle mass, that means you're pretty close to dying. Your whole body is eating itself away. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, we brought him in and did a little research, let Fish and Game know we had him, and come to find out somebody was illegally trying to sell him on Craigslist. And I guess when they were about to get busted, they let the cat go and they disappeared. So that's what happened there. So I'm being told um, we are going to be wrapping up soon. So um, we'll go see Ngozi. Let's go see Ngozi. Let's and for that treat there. that uh, we promised. Down there. And hopefully my, my person with the food is already down there. They were following with us. Yeah. But then she disappeared. All right. So we're also going to pass by what I understand uh, some of what um, convention raised money has uh, paid for as well. Am I correct? Yes, yes, the bathroom area. Yes. Um, and some of these pages as well um, were also, uh, I don't remember exactly which pages. I know at least some of these little lockdown houses for the, the birds, some of them, the birds and the monkeys were bought for that money. Somebody's about to run our asses over. <laughs> another day. Yeah. So the bathroom down here, uh, we very badly needed because we had school groups coming out, and then we'd have like 20 kids coming in my house to use the bathroom. And especially when I've got animals in the house, it's not conducive to the environment. So, uh, we, bought, we went ahead and bought this and fully decorated, had it plumbed out. That was all money that came from you guys. So now we have functional bathrooms, and if it wasn't for the virus, we'd have kids coming in for summer camp. So in this case, we've got somebody very special. In fact, this entire place was also built with uh, money from you guys. This entire place. And this was... This is not a cheap area. Right? Oh, he knows. He knows. <laughs> yeah, so this entire area was bought and paid for by you guys. This is Ngozi. Uh, Ngozi is a Nile croc that I've had for quite a while now. He's got the potential of being uh, 1,200 pounds and 20 feet long. And he heard my voice. I am the only one that feeds and takes care of this animal, and he heard my voice. So one of the cats left some eat left over the other night. So That's a very deep pool in there. Where are you going, bud? He'll be back in a minute. He's got to drown it first, you know. So yeah, this is a very, very large area and uh, this is not a cheap area. And you guys fully funded this when we need it the most. Um, he was growing very quickly. So where we had him, um, 
I'd have to go in there and he would corner me and everything. So it wasn't a safe situation. So, and Gozi, here. He's coming. Here, and Gozi. Yeah, usually one piece is not near enough for this boy. And Gozi, here. But you still didn't even swallow it. What are you doing? It's his prize. You didn't even swallow it. But you're going to take more, aren't you? This is basically like a, a dinosaur here right in front of you. So question we had come in, do crocs tend to uh, store their food in the water? Um, it depends how big the food is. Because they don't chew like the gators, like he's positioning it right now. If it's something very large, they will take it in the water. Um, they'll shove it under a log or whatever, let it rot for a few days till it's good and squishy and slimy, and then they'll come back and tear it up. So it goes to here. He is an eating machine. Pretty cool, huh? And he was actually going to be sold in the pet trade. He was heading up north to the Hamburg, Pennsylvania show. Um, and my guys just happened to be at the reptile dealer's place when, uh, when they saw this tank of dirty water back there and asked what was in it. And that's when they were told a Nile crocodile. And, it's kind of funny because alligators and crocodiles are very different. I was the only one that had worked crocodiles, so I had to warn my guys, and they didn't believe me. He is very smart and can be very aggressive. Alligators, very passive. They try to stay away from people. He will actually sneak up on you. So, huh. Look at that fat foot. Look at that fat foot. Yeah, he's my baby, but he's eat me. So um, that pretty much will conclude our um, visit to CARE. We hope that everybody has enjoyed meeting the animals on site. Uh, we do encourage that if you do have uh, money to donate, please donate it this weekend through Megaplex's donation link. Uh, any other time, donate directly through thecarefoundation.org. They do have a... Um, donation link through PayPal set up already. Um, but we thank you again for tuning in and um, hope you guys have a great rest of your convention and continue to support care in the future.